Hello students. Today I am Dr. Bhupin Chand Patak from Elsom Government PG College Prasnagar. Today I will tell you about the vaccines. This lecture is only educational purpose and the reference of this lecture is from the EPG Part Sala. Uh, it is the paper number 9 Animal Cell Biotechnology and for more study you should go to the module number 9 29 production of basmines and pharmaceutical proteins written by Dr. Bivadhan, team of the Dr. Bivadhan. In this lecture series, I will just to tell you about that. What is vaccine? We should go. Our whole lecture series depends on this criteria, the principles of vaccine, what are the steps of vaccine in products, types of vaccine, and some pharmaceutical products under the recombinant DNA technology. Now the question is, what is vaccine? Vaccine uh, is nothing. Vaccine is, is an antigen. Vaccine it contains an antigen. Just like as that disease causing microorganisms, but the pathogenicity of that microorganisms will be killed, either will be killed or weakened. And that toxin, the toxicity will be killed, so it will not activates the body's immune system against it, but it improves the immunity against a particular disease for which this vaccine has been administered. We all are knowing about that. There are two types of lymphocytes, B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. And these B and T lymphocytes has some memory cells. When such type of antigen comes in, in our body, now these immune response will encounter to such of such type of the antigens such type of antigens and produce the antibodies how these antibodies will be produced what is the mechanism behind to this one which type the antigen which type of cells will be responsible for killing of such type of the antigens everything will be retained in the memory cells. The vaccines provides safety to us. Whenever this pathogen affect our body in near future, then what will be happening? The secondary response will take very less time or encountering to these pathogens, or encountering to these antigens, encountering to these immunogens. At first, this vaccine and vaccination, what is derived from a variolia vaccine, that is a small pack of cow. And this is the story of Edward Jenner. He's, he was a veterinarian. And in that place, the place people think that if the person is affected with cowpox, then there is no effect of smallpox on these affected people. Tom, Tom, uh, he got the idea from to these points and he will discover the vaccines. Or the variola. Now there are some steps of the vaccine production that at first there is the selection of the strain for vaccine production. The strain should be non virulence because no pathogenicity. The non virulence strains must be selected for the vaccine production. And the virus required the cells for the products reproduction and survival. The virus get changed and it will be weakened. So it will lose loss to its virulence. And by that process, you can culture repeatedly 
culture to these ingrown cells and they infect. Next, the process is cell culture adaptations. Cell culture adaptations. They stain by this cell culture adaptation process, you can stain the select the strains. You can select the strains and such as uh, the examples measles, mum, rubella, chicken pox, singles, and rotavirus, and so on. Next is the generation of the antigens. How you should generate the antigens? So, viruses are specifically grown in the primary cells, such as the cells of the chicken, chicken eggs for the production of influenza virus, influenza vaccine, or the cell lines, or cell line, cell lines, where the virus loses its virulence nature. Second is bioreactors. Nowadays, the bioreactors are used for growing the bacteria, such as the Haemophilus influenza type B. The specific recombinant proteins are derived from these viruses or bacteria can be expressed in the expression systems used in bacteria, yeast, or mammalian cells. So you can, uh, by that process, you can know the nature of the that specific proteins, and by using some bioinformatic tools, you should go do some permutations and recombinations for this process. And after that process, you can. Uh, generate the antigens you can generate to that antigen antigen are specific to some proteins basically these are the proteins carbohydrate nucleic acids and so on then your second job is to purify to that antigen you should purify to that antigens most of the appropriate vaccines are based on the bacteria viruses and polysaccharides and so on the basis of their size you can separate to them then the depth of the normal flow filtration then what you used? You used a normal flow filtration for the clarification and reduction of the bio burden by cross flow filtrations using hollow fiber cartridge for concentrating and washing. You should use to this process. This is normal flow filtration for the clarification process. Finally, the sterile filtration assures the vaccine's safety. Now the depth filters are being used which are which protect in the columns in the chromatography. The chromatography is a technique and by with the, with the help of this chromatography techniques, you can purify these specific biomolecules. So here you are, you are using some specific type of the chromatography say this, such as size exclusion chromatography for group separation, size exclusion chromatography, and the role of affinity and exchange of chromatotechnique, these chromatography techniques are used. And by this process, such as the region, media, and other metrics are, are also used for the vaccine purification process. So, uh, here is the important process that uh, you should uh, need some specific techniques uh, for the purification of this antigen. For that process, you should need some chromatographic techniques. A advanced form of the chromatographic techniques are the mass spectrophotometry. You should need to go to the liquid chromatography, mass spectrophotometry, and so on. The sophisticated techniques by that process, you can identify that particular particular nature of that antigens. If you get the a specific nature of that antigens, so by that process, you can formulate the vaccines, you can formulate vaccines, how which type of the antibodies will interact to these antigen molecules and what will be the combination of then drug designing a lot of the things you should need for that process. So you should uh, uh, technically sound also your, your technical sound um, uh, also needed uh, for this purification of the antigens because if you if any contamination is occurs in the antigens so then it will uh, it will become a immunogen it will provoke the immunity and it will not the immune system will not respond particularly on that point point so therefore the purification of the antigen purification of antigen is a, a specific process a specific process and do that process very carefully uh, very carefully after generation of the antigens then you purify to that antigen then we will come to the next points then what will be happening there are some specific responses there is antigen and immunogen <coughs> sorry in case of the immunogens their molecular size is large 
but in case of antigen their molecular weight is less bus these antigens low size of molecular weight antigens they cannot provoke to the immune response but our job is to provoke the immune response for the production of vaccines so what what will be happening that that then you should uh, integrate to that antigen with some adjuvants that adjuvant that adjuvant molecules in hand, that adjuvant molecule increase the molecular weight of that particular antigens if they infuse the their molecular weights so ultimately then they provoke to the immune response such as the, the what what is the job of these adjuvants the adjuvants enhance the immune response of the recipients to the antigens whenever we we inject the antigen in the animals then uh, the antigen then this antigen will be uh, the, suppose that this is the antigen then it will be the adjuvants now its molecular weight and size will increase now it becomes just like as a immunogen now it provoke to the immune response of that particular uh, particular uh, particular receiver particular receiver uh, particular receiver though uh, here are this some uh, some uh, natural adjuvants also for the vaccine production so what are these these are the saponins natural these are the natural glycosides of steroids and they have they shown the different biological and pharmacological activities as a vaccine adjuvants and what these saponins can activate the mammalian immune systems they activate the mammalian immune system and by that process they are the potential vaccine adjuvants the combination of this uh, uh, the development of the combination of vaccine is more challenging due to the potential incompatibilities and interactions between the antigen and other integrants uh, you don't know about that whenever you inject the antigen inside to the body then how will it react because there are some secondary molecules are also present in the body in 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 vitro culture systems it is a um, it is a restricted points restricted point here in vitro culture mediums it is restricted points you have control all the conditions but inside to the body you cannot control so the the efficacy of the vaccine the efficacy of the vaccine the safety of the vaccines that are very important points you should consider uh, you, uh, for the production of vaccine vaccine production uh, consider to all these points consider all to these points then you should after this process how the steps how you should uh, select the strain and how can you generate the antigens and how can you purify the antigens and uh, how can you make this antigen at immunogens by using the uh, adjuvants after that you should formulate to that vaccines the formulation process of the vaccine vaccine is formulated for a prolonged storage and uh, how can you storage to that vaccine so for that process you need some stabilizers you need some preservatives because these the multi dose or multi dose or single dose vials uh, they can be transported and so you need some stabilizers and preservatives uh, preservatives so this is the safety point of view this is very important extremely important because if it will is this safety or stability is very important why if it will uh, it has some problems then what will be happening that antigen molecule have either that virus either that bacteria will lose to its antigenicity and develop loot uh, antigenicity and become immunogen then it will cause a lot of problems so there are some other factors also which um, affect the stability of the vaccine such as the ph temperature also so for the bacterial vaccines they can lose the stability due to aggression hydrolysis of carbohydrates and proteins so for this process the suppose that uh, here is a preservative this is the magnesium sulfate this is very important students so you have to uh, um, learn to all these things very important for measles you should need the magnesium sulfate and for the uh, oral polio vaccine magnesium chloride and lactose sorbitol and sorbitol gelatin these are the stabilizing agents so these preservatives are added particularly in the multi dose vaccines so uh, uh, these preservatives uh, will prevent the any bacterial and fungal growth on that vaccines so these preservatives are the thio mersal these are the examples formaldehyde and phenol derivatives the now this final vaccine is constituted after uh, before packaging before packaging uh, 
these final vaccines will be uh, will be uh, will comes into existence after after this after after formulating formulation of that vaccines then you, you should go to the next the packaging steps the formulation of the vaccines uh, you will see here that uh, the vaccine is uh, 